think I started as a kid reading about mountains. Never really imagining I'd ever get up there. I was fascinated by the whole thing. The idea of expeditions, the long drawn out sort of affair of getting lost somewhere and coming back and having discovered something, you know? It's only when I go climbing I find that getting off the ground, defying gravity, I rediscover a movement in the universe that I've always had. And that's brilliant. At least I'm capable of doing something, right? And I think you need that in life to be sure at least you can do something well. I suppose I've become so used to those emotions and sensations that uh, the experience altogether is too fascinating to stop. Yeah, I suppose a climbing junk in that sense, you know, like, and, uh, and I know full well there's a danger at the end of it if I'm not careful. But I do feel, I still feel this need, and people say, haven't you, still, haven't you grown out of that yet? So you've got to stop one day, you know. As far as soloing is concerned, for me it's the ultimate artistic expression I can come up with actually. I accept the risk I suppose, but you try and reduce it obviously with experience and all and I'll just be trying to be realistic about my own abilities, you know, really. You walk in the rain, you're probably going to get wet, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's a fact of life, you know. The discomfort and danger that go with climbing, and particularly solo climbing, um, you just got to put up with it. Those are friends who have had bad accidents, you know, rocks on their heads, uh, seracs on top of you, some survive, some don't, yeah. No, I've lost a lot of friends there, I must admit, yeah. I suppose, yeah, there must have been lots of times you come pretty close to it, but maybe you don't realise how close sometimes. <laughs> 